ولقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the last part of lesson 5 of book 1. Today we will try to finish up the remaining of the exercises of this lesson. Let's start with exercise 8 on page 31. In this exercise, we are given the following example question. Kitabu man hadha? Whose book is this? Kitabu man hadha? Remember here, kitabu is mudaf and man is mudaf ilayh. Therefore, man is coming in place of a majrur ism. But because man is mabni, we do not see the apparent sign of its being majrur. Now, we will practice asking questions of this type. I will show you a few pictures, and let's see if we can build questions similar to this one, okay? For example, qalamun. And we want to ask, whose pen is this? How do we say it in Arabic? Qalamu man hadha. Whose pen is this? Qalamu man hadha. How about this one? It is qamisun. What would be the question? Qamisu man hadha. Whose shirt is this? Qamisu man hadha. And this is baytun. What would be our question this time? Baytu man hadha. Whose house is this? Baytu man hadha. And finally, let's use sarirun. Sariru man hadha. Whose bed is this? Sariru man hadha. Okay, that's it with this exercise. Let's move on to exercise 9 at the bottom of the same page. Here we will practice reading the words starting with Hamzatul Wasl. The first word is Ismun. Remember, the rule is that if there is nothing coming before this word, like when it comes at the beginning of the sentence, we read Ismun with the initial Kasra sound. And if there is a word before it that we need to connect it to, we drop the initial Kasra sound when reading it. For example, Ismul Waladi Muhammadun, Wasmul Binti Zainabu. So here, we are reading the first ism with kasra because there is nothing before it. But the second occurrence has the harf wa before it. And we connect wa to ism by dropping the initial kasra sound of ism. And say, wasmul binti. Not wa ismul binti, but we say, wasmul binti. That is why the alif of the word ism has a hamzatul wasl written over it. Here's another example. Ismul mudarisi hamidun masmul mudiri. You see, we are reading the first ism with kasra, and we are connecting the second ism to ma when reading it and saying masmul mudiri, not ma ismul mudiri, we are saying masmul mudiri. Another word that starts with hamzatul wasl is the ism ibnun. For example, ibnu khalidin fil madrasati wa ibnu hamidin fil jamiati. In this example sentence, we read the first word with kasra at the beginning. And we read the second one by dropping the kasra sound because it is connected to wa as wabnu hamidin. Another sentence is ibn al mudarrisi fil fasli ayna ibn al mudiri. You see, the second occurrence is connected to ayna, so we need to drop the kasra and say ayna ibn al mudiri. Ayna ibn al mudiri. On the next page, we have six example sentences given that involve one of these two words. Let's see if you can read them correctly using the phonetic rule that we learned. We will also try to analyze these sentences as we go. The first one. Ibn Muhammadin fil Iraqi wa ibn Hamidin fil Hindi. We can translate this sentence as the son of Muhammad is in Iraq and the son of Hamid is in India. We are reading the first alif with kasra as Ibn Muhammadin and jumping over the second alif and reading it as Wabnu Hamidin. Let's try to analyze this sentence real quick. We have two ismiya sentences connected by the harfu atf wa. The mubtada of the first sentence is Ibnu, it is also mudaf, and Muhammadin is the mudaf ilayh, majrur ism. Fil Iraqi is jar majrur, and it is coming as the shibhu jumla type khabar of the first sentence. In the second sentence, Ibnu is mubtada and mudaf, and Hamidin is mudaf ilayh. Fil Hindi is the shibhu jumla type khabar. Next sentence is Kharajabnu tabibi min al bayti. The son of the doctor came out of the house. Notice here we are joining Kharaja to Ibnu and reading them together as Kharajabnu. This is the fi'liya sentence, right? 
Can you identify the fi'l and fa'il of this sentence? The fi'l is kharaja. And the fa'il here is the ism ibnu, which is also mudaf. And at tabibi is the mudaf ilayh. And min al bayti is jar wa majrur. The third sentence. ذهب ابن التاجر إلى السوق The son of the trader went to the market. This is another example where we drop kasra of ابن because we are connecting it to the preceding word as ذهب ابن This is a fi'liya sentence. ذهب is the fi'l and ابن is the fa'il and is also mudaf and التاجر is the mudaf ilayh and إلى السوق is the jar majrur. Next اسم المهندس فيصل واسم الطبيب مسعود The name of the engineer is Faisal and the name of the doctor is Mas'ud. We've got two ismiya sentences connected by حرف عطف و. The ism اسم in each sentence is coming as the mubtada. And Faisal is the khabar of the first sentence and Mas'ud is the khabar of the second sentence. The two idafa combinations are اسم المهندس and اسم الطبيب Sentence number 5 مسم الرجل What is the name of the man? Notice how we are connecting the word ما to اسمه by dropping the kasra of اسمه and saying مسم الرجل And the last sentence ابن من أنت؟ أنا ابن الوزير Whose son are you? I am the son of the minister The word الوزير means the minister أنا is the مبتدى and ibnu is the khabar of the ismiya sentence here. Ibnu is also mudaf, and the ism majrur al-waziri is the mudaf ilayh. We are finished with this exercise. Next, we have a list of the new words of the lesson given in a box. Let's repeat them together real quick. I will read them, and you try to repeat after me, okay? Ar-Rasulu The Messenger Ar-Rasulu Al-Ka'batu the Kaaba. Al Kaabatu. Al Ismu. The name. Al Ismu. Al Ibnu. The son. Al Ibnu. Al Ammu. The paternal uncle. Al Ammu. Al Khalu. The maternal uncle. Al Khalu. الحقيبة The bag الحقيبة السيارة The car السيارة الشارع The street الشارع مغلق Closed مغلق تحت Under تحت هناك Over there هناك It looks like all these words are of ism type. Can you spot the mu'annath ism among them? Remember, mu'annath feminine ism typically ends with ta marbuta. So we have al-ka'batu, al-haqibatu, and as-sayyaratu are ending with ta marbuta here. So they must be mu'annath. The rest are mudhakkar. Insha'Allah, we will learn more about Mu'annath Ism in the next lesson. At the bottom of the page, we see an example of the Idafa combination given. Sayyaratul Mudarrisi, the car of the teacher. Ism Sayyaratu is the Mudaf, and Al Mudarrisi is the Mudaf ilayh. Together, they are the Idafa combination. I have a side question here. How do we say the cat is under the car of the teacher? القط تحت سيارة المدرس القط is the مبتدا تحت is the ضارف which is منسوب اسم it is playing the function of شبه جملة type خبر in this اسمية sentence سيارتي is the مضاف إليه to ضارف and it is also مضاف to المدرس that is why it doesn't carry al article and المدرس is the مضاف إليه so here ضارف and مضاف إليه and مضاف and مضاف إليه are overlapping we are done with this lesson Here's what we learned in lesson 5 of book 1. First of all, we learned how to build an idafa combination from two ism type words. Idafa or mudaf and mudaf ilayh combinations were the main theme of this lesson. And I hope we all feel comfortable with such construction by now. 
Then we learned about Harfun Nida Ya and what happens to the ism after it, as in Ya Faisalu or Ya Waladu. We were introduced to Dwarf and how it can come as Shibhu Jumla type Khabar in Ismiya sentences. We learned about the phonetic rule regarding the couple of ism starting with Hamzatul Wasl, which are Ismun wa Ibnun. And we saw lots of examples for each of these concepts or rules listed here. I hope you feel good about them and ready to move on to lesson 6, which we will start in the next video, insha'Allah. Until the next video, Assalamu Alaikum.